Hey guys, I picked up a little something. An N64 Rumble Pack. I know, super exciting. Can't wait to use this. Awesome. Also, I have this PS5. Hmm. I guess I'll talk about it. Hello everyone, thanks for watching to a level here as, yeah, um, you saw a few days ago I was playing Ratchet and Clank, uh, Rift Apart, recently got a PS5, and yeah, I thought I'd do a first impressions video as here's a picture of the PS5 hooked up, not going to unhook the console and all that, so yeah, just joined the box as I think I can put it down, yeah. Horizon Forbidden West, though, unfortunately, it's a digital-only version, but, hey, you know, still great game to get, but, uh, yeah, thought I'd talk about my first impressions of it, and, kind of, yeah, initial thoughts similar to when I got the Xbox Series X. Uh, we have a few games, so two of them I've had previously for a couple years now, which was... Uh, Watch Dogs Legions, Legion, <laughs> and Immortals Phoenix Rising, eventually got these on Xbox One, but yeah, when I thought I was going to get PS5 much earlier, in 2021, you know, was starting to pick up a few games, and these were cheap, but because that never happened, just got Xbox One version, so yeah, won't really talk about these ones, but yeah, other ones I got with the system. Of course, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, fantastic game. And Stranger of Paradise of uh, Final Fantasy Origin. So, yeah, those are the two games. I also have the PlayStation Plus Premium, so there's a few games extra I got to play there too with the Demon Souls remake. Uh, I haven't checked out Returnal yet, but I plan to. So, yeah, let's begin and... I kind of want to do this by talking quickly about kind of the big negatives I have about it because I do like to be positive and <laughs> all that, but there's just a couple things I kind of want to get out of the way before kind of diving more into more positive stuff. So first, just PS5 in general, <laughs> how are these still unavailable? It's ridiculous to me that we're you know, year and a half, we're getting close to two years since these were released, and they're becoming slightly more available, but still not quick enough, I would say, as it's kind of why you're seeing a lot of games have PS4 and PS5 releases, but it is what it is, and, you know, I understand with COVID and all that, like, Sony, of course, isn't the only ones making electronics or anything so but it's just one of those things that it's unfortunate that people still have a very hard time getting hands on it so after that yeah the biggest negative i have with the ps5 is actually the whole ps4 to ps5 upgrade <laughs> so guess i'll elaborate a little bit so first just talking about PS4 games and kind of getting your saves downloaded and all that. So with PlayStation Plus, it's not too bad. You can easily uh, download your cloud saves onto your PS5. Though I had to only do a couple games at a time because PS5 did not want to load about 14 gigabytes of save data at once. So yeah, I just had to kind of click on them individually which was a bit annoying but easy enough and once you get into you know your ps4 games and just playing them it's easy enough but <laughs> you know those ps4 to ps5 upgrades is a bit of a pain so with a disc uh, it doesn't really tell you how to do the free upgrade i kind of stumbled upon it as yeah you kind of put in the game and then you can view the store page of that game and then it'll tell you free upgrade so you can download the ps5 version 
And <laughs> here's the big issue that comes with it is, I guess first, while the free it upgrade is disc based when it comes to digital games, I don't have too many, but I do have Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 remastered, which is can be upgraded to PS5. And for digital, you have to pay a $10 fee to get the PS5 version. If I had the disc, it would have been free. So I, I don't really get that practice, right? You know, especially for Sony, who, like every other company, wants people to buy digitally because that's how you get the full sales, and especially buying directly from PlayStation Store. You know, and you kind of discourage people from doing that. It's also one of those things where, now I can't say for used PS4 games, like I'm not sure if the free upgrade keeps working if you have the disc or if it only works once per account. I have no idea, but it's just a <laughs> bit cumbersome and could have been thought out a bit better, you know, this is where Microsoft, I think, did a way better job with the smart delivery thing, where it would kind of recognize what system you had and give you the best version of that game, <laughs> you know, without any of the hassles or without paying extra fees. But I'm just saying this because uh, <laughs> I found in stores too, PS5 games cost more than PS4 games, so... If I want to play a PS5 version, I might as well just buy the PS4 game, <laughs> you know, and then do the free upgrade, right? It's, <laughs> it's just, it could have been better, I would say. And then the other issue I have with this whole upgrade thing is when you actually get a PS, <laughs> like get the PS5 version installed, some games are easy with your saves, like Lost Judgment, where you can easily load your PS4 save onto the PS5 version, no issues there. But you get a game like Tales of Arise, where you have to download both the PS4 and PS5 versions, because you have to go on the PS4 version, upload that save onto the cloud, or wherever onto the Tales of Arise server, I guess it would be. Then you can go to the PS5 version of that game, download that save, and use it. <laughs> so that's very cumbersome. Or the worst one is there's some games like Kena Bridge of Spirits that do not allow you to transfer at all. Now luckily, I wasn't too far into it. I played quite a bit of it kind of stop so I don't mind starting over again, especially since I really like that game, but still, it's a bummer to have to start over again, <laughs> you know, where it can't carry the saves. Another weird thing, too, is unlike how PS3, PS4, and Vita games, if they were all kind of the same game, they would share trophy data, but for PS4 and PS5 games, they're separate trophy datas. Just kind of odds, I guess, though, if you're a trophy hunter, I mean, you get extra trophies that way. But yeah, it's just really, really strange. And the only game I found was Tales of Arise that actually carried my trophy data onto the PS5 version, so... I would have to get the trophies again, even though I have the save and all that. It's weird. Like, I haven't dove too much into it because I beat games like Lost Judgment, so I was just testing. I, you know, wasn't really playing too much, right? So, can't say too much on that, but yeah. Overall, I just think the PS4 to PS5 upgrade could have been a lot better. It's a clunky transition, but. You know, I am glad it's still there, and the backwards compatibility with PS4 games is really great. Now, when it comes to that backwards compatibility, it's pretty basic, right? Like, PS4, you know, 
playing the PS4 game on PS5, the only difference you'll find will be load times and, you know, more stable frame rate, right? There won't, it won't be like Xbox where the Xbox One games are enhanced, you know, resolution and all this other stuff, right? It's pretty much just a straight port, but you will notice, yeah, the stable frame rate along with load times as, yeah, you'll see here just me playing the Kaluga, Kaluga effect too? I, I can't remember the name of it, I'll have to check again, but yeah, just testing that game out with load times and the battle system, it's pretty smooth and all that. So, yeah, kind of, you know, but I don't need much anyways for that sort of stuff. I'm just glad there is PS4 backwards compatibility for every game except, I think, 5 to 10 games, which are pretty obscure games from what I know. <laughs> now, I want to talk about the PS5 controller as, yeah, I really love this controller. Now, I can't say about... Uh, stick drift or anything, I just got the system, so yeah, I can't really talk about that, no issues right now, <laughs> but just overall, I really like the improvements compared to the PS4 controller, as the haptic feedback, the adaptive triggers feels really, really good, especially in a game like Ratchet and Clank, where, yeah, this game really showcases what the PS5 can do with the lack of load times, along with kind of the controller setup and the triggers, and it takes a while to get used to for sure, like, the controller vibrates constantly, and just shooting all your weapons and all that, it feels weird at first, but man, it's such an immersive experience, and really, really love it. Now, for other PS5 games, I don't think there's too much that really showcases what the PS5 can do currently because the big thing that we're in, you know, same with the Series X, is this next gen of consoles feels like it's kind of in limbo right now because of what happened with COVID and how these consoles are still very hard to get hold of, especially the PS5 that a lot of these games aren't able to take advantage of kind of the hardware or anything like that currently. Now, that's not to say playing a game like Horizon Forbidden West is exactly the same as it would be on PS4, but, <laughs> you know, a lot of these games, especially graphically, aren't going exactly, you know, be feel next gen and we've been kind of in this state for a while anyways right even just from ps3 to ps4 or the 360 to the xbox one kind of felt like that right but overall yeah there's a lot to like about the ps5 the ui takes a while to get used to uh <laughs> but once you kind of figure everything out, like it took me a while to figure out how to actually turn off the system because I'm so used to holding the PlayStation button on all these controllers, say with like the Xbox and all that. And so that took a while where, yeah, you just press it once and then the menu will pop up at the bottom. But yeah, once you get used to it, because it is different but still similar to ps4 ui and the store like it's basically part of your menu now instead of going into loading a store up it's kind of just seamless into ps5 though i will say the store right now feels a little cumbersome it's kind of i find it a bit hard to find what i'm looking for in the uh, PlayStation stores, even the PlayStation Plus kind of premium games are kind of cumbersome to navigate through right now, but over time, you know, I'm sure it'll improve. The one thing that I do not like about the UI, though, is how they got rid of PlayStation folders, where 
you know, so a lot of my games, I, you know, especially if I have games in the same series, or I like to categorize from kind of games I'm playing currently, I can't do that. Alright, sorry there, I had to sneeze. <laughs> but, yeah, just saying, you know, it only saves about 10 or so games at the top, and then it goes into the game library if you want to play other games, so it's a bit cumbersome there. Also, yeah, the storage doesn't last very long since so many of these games, especially PS5 ones, take up, you know, close to 100 gigabytes, if not more, so eventually, yeah, I'll have to get another SSD kind of storage, which hopefully won't need to get for a while, <laughs> you know, hopefully I I'll be okay just having a few games on the system. Just, it's nice to have, you know, a lot of games so you can, you don't have to keep uninstalling and then reinstalling the same game over and over again, but either way, yeah, for PS5, you know, I really enjoy it. I, this is the system I really wanted, you know, for since the PS4, I kind of been playing a lot of Sony the most, just because for PS4, you know, I love my JRPGs and all that, and you get them the most on PlayStation these days, so, you know, really glad to have it, but do you need a PS5, especially if you have a Series X and all that? No, I would say you don't need it, but, you know, if you're someone like me who just loves video games, kind of want all the systems, and don't have to worry now about buying a new console for a while, then, yeah, go for the PS5. There's a lot to like about it, just the biggest thing is I wish the PS4 to PS5 upgrade was a bit smoother. It's just clunky, but other than that, Really enjoying the console, really enjoying the games, especially Ratchet and Clank, and yeah, controllers. A lot of fun right now, so let me know what you guys think. Are you enjoying the PS5, or do you hate it? <laughs> or are you not even interested in getting it because you have other things to play, or you just don't like what the system offers? Like, <laughs> you know, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> thanks everyone. Take care.